Hello and welcome back to the Paleo Cast Gaming Network. It is good to be back. It's been ages. I have actually been on sick leave for quite a while, so that kind of sucks. But I have been playing quite a lot of Elden Ring, and I just need to talk about this because it's so weird and so interesting. Now, pretty much with every game that I play nowadays, I'm always in the back of my mind trying to think of, you know, is there anything in this that could make a good video? And as luck would have it, Elden Ring has some really interesting geology, and also some interesting creature design that's clearly based on the fossil record, like how the gigantic dragons that you can find sometimes have feathers. But there's something else that we just have to talk about. I don't know what this creature is called, but I know that Twitter and Elden Ring fans call it the Tyranno Dog. What the developers of Elden Ring have essentially done here is taken the proportions, the articulation, and even the behaviour of an inaccurate T-Rex that you could find in pretty much any other video game out there and applied it to one of the other existing monsters in the game, the stray dogs that you can find all over the map. And the end result is genuinely terrifying. And in my experience of breaking down inaccurate dinosaurs on this channel, I don't think we've come across anything like this. The idea to, to take those tropes, even the shrink wrapping of the skin, and just slap it on an animal that you know, a dog that we're more or less familiar with, I think it really highlights just how weird some of these tropes are. So we're going to sort of break down how they did this, or rather figure out why us dinosaur fans see an inaccurate T-Rex in this animal. So first things first, as it comes charging towards us, we can see that it has a gigantic head. Just like T-Rex, it has a colossal skull relative to the rest of its body. And there's a whole host of reasons why T-Rex had a big head, but we think the reason for that massive skull was simply because it devoured gigantic prey. That massive skull accommodated powerful jaw muscles, which opened the door for a really important adaptation that we call, with its tremendous name, Extreme Osteophagy. In evolution, having access to food is a really important uh, selection pressure that can drive evolutionary change. If an adaptation or a mutation allows you to access food more easily, then you're more likely to survive and pass on that food-getting gene onto your future descendants so that they can eat just as well, and so on. The majority of predators don't tend to eat bone, and if they do, they have to swallow the bone in its entirety. And as you can imagine, what that does is it limits the size of the prey that you can eat. It's sort of a um, eyes too big for your stomach, or rather the bone of the thing you're eating is too big to fit down your throat. But the unique jaws of a Tyrannosaurus Rex were able to basically pulverize that bone into nice bite-sized chunks, which allowed them to eat much larger prey, such as Triceratops and Edmontosaurus and other large herbivores that lived in the Cretaceous period. And we have loads of evidence to back this up. We have Triceratops bones with massive bite marks taken out of them, and even coprolites that probably belong to T-Rex or at least a similar related dinosaur that contain fragments of pulverized bone. Another interesting thing that it's demonstrating for us just wonderfully is this massive wide open mouth. It looks very ridiculous, but it has been calculated that Tyrannosaurus Rex could open its jaw to a maximum of about 80 degrees, I think? Obviously that's not the most optimum uh, range of its mouth, but the muscles would allow it. And we know this by essentially taking a 3D model of a T-Rex skull, slap on some virtual muscles, force the jaw open, calculate the stresses and strains on the muscles until you figure out their breaking point. Even though it's very over-exaggerated here, I felt like I had to point this out, that this actually isn't the most insane thing that this creature can do. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the way in which they made this creature was if the designers literally took that dog that I showed you earlier and stretched and contorted its bones into this shape. Obviously, the longer legs and the shorter arms immediately evoke a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But looking more closely, you can see that they've extended the bones in the foot, which we call the metatarsals, to sort of recreate that classic theropod bird leg uh, that a lot of people actually mistake for backwards knees. Uh, the knees are still up here, um, but the extended metatarsal just kind of makes it look like they have a weird inverted knee. And this is easily done, given that dogs and canines already have extended metatarsals. That's why 
birds and dogs are what we call digitigrade animals, whereas humans and also bears, I think, with our nice flat metatarsals are what we call plantigrade animals. Going back to the skull, though, there is something about this creature that is really, really interesting. You will notice that even when this creature's mouth is closed, you can still see all of its teeth. And that's because the designers have literally ripped its lips off. And those of you who are more familiar with debates about dinosaur life reconstructions will know where this is going. It's very common to see dinosaurs in media with big toothy grins, but recent evidence suggests that they would have had a lip and the teeth wouldn't always be visible. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of this debate. However, if it turns out that T-Rex did have lips, then I think this creature really helps demonstrate just how weird and unnatural it is to have depicted T-Rex for so long without them. Because seeing that same trope applied to an animal that we're all pretty familiar with, a dog, <laughs> it just shows how weird and freaky it looks. Of course, the other reason that T-Rex tend to look so toothy in a lot of uh, reconstructions, especially in video games like Second Extinction, is because they're basing their life reconstructions on the skulls exactly as they look today. There's a problem with that, because when a T-Rex dies, all of the soft tissue in its mouth decays and all of the teeth actually slip out of the skull, exposing the really long roots that attach to them. If you look at a tooth on its own, you can see there is a massive difference between the enamel-capped curved serrated fang and then the long straight root which attaches to it but if you look at any t-rex skull you can see all the teeth sticking out in random lengths because they're slowly falling out that is just a factor of their taphonomy their decay and their preservation and yet it gets carried over into life reconstructions even though we know for a fact they would not have looked like that when they were alive and i think a similar thing's been done here giving the teeth random lengths which again makes it look super weird and gnarly and just fantastic. The only thing that really sets this thing apart in terms of its silhouette from a theropod dinosaur is the tail. Instead of this nice big tail that would counterbalance the head, instead it's got this horrible little shriveled rat tail which, if anything, just throws the thing off balance even more and makes it look even more uncanny. So, as always, the point of this video wasn't really to complain about what T-Rexes look like in video games, you know, <laughs> far from it. Instead, I just wanted to highlight that this instantly iconic and memorable creature was possible by just taking from the buffet of tropes already present in dinosaur video games. And to be honest, I think that this creature helps us talk about why these tropes are so strange and so inaccurate more than any inaccurate dinosaur, because again, like I've said, they've applied them to a creature that we're pretty familiar with. And the end result is genuinely fantastic, and it's one of the reasons why I really love this game. So much so that we're almost certainly going to do this again. There's a load of creatures in this game that I'd love to talk about. Um, if you're interested in that, please do let me know. Okay, I will talk to you next time. It is such a pleasure to be back on the channel making videos again. See you next time.